say suicide affects 115 people, but I can tell you that you can't quantify someone's life on, on a number, right? So the impact has skyrocketed. So one life and we started living. And the reason, you know, a big part of the motivation behind that was um, at Dwayne's wake, we made shirts for him and had his face on it with a message that he loved out of a song by Xavier Rudd. Um, and we sold the shirts to help fund the family so they could pay for the, for yeah. the funeral. And his parents looked at Casey and myself. So Casey's my, my partner, and we were both started in 2013. Um, and they said, hey, you know, you keep the money, just do something good with it. And we're like, wow. well, I was still struggling. I'm sure a lot of people were struggling at this stage, you know, going through the depressive, talking about losing a friend and yeah. the drinking that comes with it. And we started living. Dwayne always used to say, we're living. We're living, man, we're living. He was living a life to the fullest all the time, like I was, like we all probably do. and a good vibe so today it's a special one because i don't have one guest i have two guests i have a power couple i have sam webb and nadia mejia so thank you guys so much for joining and coming down here i'm honored oh thank you for having us we're excited we're excited to uh have a chat with you today. <laughs> I'm the coffee lover and he's the good vibe, so we're here. I'm, I'm the good, good vibe. vibe. <laughs> <laughs> no good vibe. I'm no good vibe. They're both like all the good vibes, so I'm pumped because whenever we have a couple, like it's like you guys are getting like double an episode because mm -hmm. you guys both have such insane stories and journeys and projects. And I'm like so excited to go full circle, dive into each of you, and then bring it all together. And I feel like the audience is gonna wanna hear how you guys have just such an abundant relationship so yeah. let's do it i'm excited let's talk about everything <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, let's, no, no mirrors no smoking mirrors here. i love it they're yeah. like open books that's exactly like me and let's start there i feel like the people might want to know where you're from what are your stories well, i guess we'll do one at a time because sam the accent give it to him okay so I'm, my background is i'm from australia um i was born and bred in australia Sydney, Australia, and I've uh, made the move to the US today. Uh, in 2018, I made the move over. I met this beauty. 19. No, it was 18. It was 2019. Oh. Was it? You moved here. Okay, so 2019. Okay, <laughs> last year was a time warp with COVID and everything yes, else. Yes, yes. And da, 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 da. But I met this beauty in Bondi Beach, actually, at a time when I least expected finding a a relationship. I was at the best time of my life and I'd already made the plan to move to the US to wow. pursue my acting career and to try and uh, spread the living message, which I'm sure we'll, we'll chat further about. But I um, met Nadia in my uh, in the crossroads, so to speak, through, through a best friend of mine back in Australia. And it's just, just like all these stars just kept aligning. I was like, I'm, I'm all in. I'm wow. all in. That's a long story short, but yeah. um, I moved out in 2019 to the States and um, yeah, trying to make a, make a life and a career here with Nance. I love that. Yeah. Oh, we're going to unravel that. Yes, yeah, that yes. was like, yeah, that, that was hard to put yeah, in the yeah, box. Yeah. I didn't want to keep going. That was a really off. good, guys, he's a podcaster if you don't know, so he knows how to like wrap the story. Yeah, I'll give you a 360. Yeah. Okay. But, Nance, let me hear. So how, also what brought you to Australia? Okay. So <laughs> born in West Virginia, then. Mm. When I was like one and a half, moved to California, which is why I say I was like born and raised in California. You're like a Cali girl. Yeah, I'm a 909 kid, so like Chino Inland Hills. Empire, Chino Hills. Hills. Oh, gosh, okay, so I grew up here, and um, I've been a model since I was 15, mm -hmm. um, and I oddly ended up going to Australia in 2019. I was in one of those things of like. Ugh, dating LA is hard. I like felt stagnant in my career. I just needed to like figure out like what's my next step in my age. I was like, you should go to Australia. And I was like, Australia? Wow. Like, oh, like, like Liam Hemsworth? Like Australia? <laughs> like I was like, do they all look like that? Okay, I'm going. <laughs> and I went for my career. I um, ended up going with one of my roommates. And wow. on my second day there, one of my friends who I had met here who was Australian, was in Australia, he's like, I'm gonna bring my best friend to dinner. And I was like, okay, sounds good, I'll bring my roommate. And the best friend was this guy. What? And when we met, it was, it was wild. I don't know, it felt like storybook. I know it sounds like so cheesy and so weird. But like, <laughs> no, but it did, it was just like someone 
who wasn't like, so what do you do? Mm-hmm. But like, they were like, how are you? Was it That's so, changer? especially from coming from LA. Yeah. Like, when I moved from Canada to LA, that was like what I felt. Everyone always leads with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not a leading question. Like, like they, they, they size you up based on mm-hmm. what you're doing and all yeah. that stuff. It's like, where can you get me? And how can you help me yeah. here? Versus like, so how are you? So mm-hmm. like, what brought you here? There was just like a depth of conversation where I was like, wow, I don't know if just the culture, like in Australia yeah. or what it was, but it just felt different and right. And two years later, here we are. He's in California. And when I met him, he was moving from Australia to California, like within that month. Yeah. That, I, I was going to ask, that's like so perfect. Yeah. He was like so you didn't just like fall in love. It was like, and then be like, oh my God, distance. No, yeah. it was like, oh, I'm actually, it's meant to be. It was so weird. Like, yeah. It was so weird. It was like, oh. I'd already had my flight booked and I'm like, I, I used to struggle with commitment and I was like, well, I'm just going to commit and hopefully she'll commit and then we'll just see where it goes. Yeah. Oh, and it look was, where we are now, yeah, two yeah. years later. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah. This is like, oh, I feel like everyone listening is like, that's like my fairy tale story that they want to happen and it will happen for everyone. I yeah. totally believe that, but it's about like, you guys are so aligned and like yeah. going into you guys individually, um, I don't know, let's go first, but I would love to tap into the projects that you guys are both doing because one of the things that really draws me to both of you guys is your why behind both of your stories is so strong. And I always say like, we were talking about energy, like the energy is so abundant when you have a strong why behind what you're doing. It like drives you. So Nads, I know like you were in the modeling industry and you um, you did pageants, Mm -hmm. you were Miss California. Yeah. Like, was that always from a young age? Cause you were in modeling, like what inspired you at a young age to get into the modeling scene? So my mom was a model and a pageant girl. So like for me, like I just wanted to follow my mom's footsteps from like a young age in our living room, like on our mantle would be like the crown, like the Miss West Virginia sash and like all this stuff. And I was like, oh, mom was like a real life princess. That's I want to be one too. Um, so I started doing pageants when I was, what, 14 was my first pageant. Um, and I really enjoyed them. They kind of like gave me a little outlet to modeling. Mm. Then I got scouted by an agency at like just turning 16 and I made it my full-time career. So um, I've been, full-time model since then and then when I I had to take a break from modeling because I got really sick um in that industry it is constantly about the way you look Mm -hmm. your size what you weigh on the scale and that got to me my family moved away when I was 17 they moved to Kentucky they were kind of like we're getting out of California like this has just been a great life but like we small town let's go so I was like I'm gonna stay here for my career well, in that time, you know, I was easily influenced. I was 17, like mm-hmm. on my own, living in a model's apartment. And I don't know, I found my worth and my validity for some reason in the way that I looked because that was my career. That's what I was working hard for. Mm-hmm. And I'd go into my agents and be like, oh, you look great. But like, you could be a little smaller. You can get a little tighter there. And that really got to me. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this full time, I got to make it like happen. Mm-hmm. And um, I got really sick. For I was I went from 135 pounds and 5'11 to 102 in a matter of like three yeah. months. Yeah, and it was just starving myself, full blown anorexic, um, never bulimic, but just counting calories obsessively. And in my healing process, I went back home to my family like a year and a half later. And as I was recovering, I was like, I enjoy modeling. Don't get me wrong, but I need to have more purpose for my career. Like I felt like just like. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very faith driven and I always feel like God had more purpose for my life than to just be a pretty face, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, as I was healing, my mom was like, okay, well, you know, as you were going back to California, you want to do that. Like maybe pageants would be a good thing for you because pageants. Yeah. There's the beauty, the glitz and the glam, but there's also the, you have to share your story and your heart and have a platform. Yeah. And it was like, you, you speaking mattered. Um, so I ended up competing for Miss California and sharing my story of anorexia. My interview, they were like, why do you want to be Miss California? And I was like, well, I'm a recovering anorexic, not a re- mm-hmm. like recovered. I didn't want to say it like it was finished because this is something I battle mm-hmm. every day, but I'm recovering and this is going to be a great way for me to get better and to use my story and make sure young girls are skipping like lunch at school and to know their worth isn't in a number mm-hmm. on a scale. And I won and I made that like my career for a year of going and speaking at schools to young women about loving the skin that they're in and in that process it helped me so much heal because I didn't want to be a hypocrite to my testimony and like not you know um 
really back what I was speaking. And I really did heal a lot that year. And now I'm a model with a message. I mean, you know, years later, I'm 25 now, that was five years ago. And I know that there's still more purpose for my life than mm -hmm. just to be that pretty face. And now everything I do is about body image, about speaking out about what I went through and mm -hmm. working with brands that align with what I, you know, really strive to be. And, and it's, it's not just a size zero. I love that. That's so that's so powerful and yeah. beautiful. And it takes so much courage and vulnerability to also share that. Because like yeah. you said, you, you're going through it. And yeah. I think that that also is what makes it so inspiring. Is mm -hmm. like, hey guys, like I'm not a finished product, yeah. but I see you because I understand the pain yeah. that you're going through. And it, I feel like that's how you can also impact more people. Because they're like, oh, she's not talking to me like a therapist or like mm -hmm. a, someone who is just telling me to go through it, but she's been through it and understands. And I would love to know like what... For anyone listening, because especially in this age we live in right yeah. now, and we'll get into like the modeling and the influencer scene. Um, but I know it's even though it's like there, there's modeling, and I know in that time like modeling was the only kind of like way, which like you have an agent. But now yeah. there's like social media, mm -hmm. and everyone's kind of like their own like you can you have your own like book essentially of yeah. like your photos, and it's just. I see it so much with younger kids. They're on social, they're on TikTok, and it's yeah. all like body stuff, and it's crazy like what they grew up with. Like we're not much older, but still, it's no, like completely different. So different. Yeah. And like I would love to hear um, any like piece of advice or anything maybe even you that you stick with in your head uh, to anyone who. Even if like they're not going through that specifically, we all, I feel like as females, we all are our own toughest critics and we all will feel like those emotions or those feelings come up. Like yeah. we're all human. Like do you have anything that you tell yourself even to this day that like really helps you just feel so comfortable with the skin you're in and oh, like love yourself? Absolutely. I think just in this day and age and society, especially for young women scrolling mm -hmm. through Instagram, Comparison is the thief of joy, mm -hmm. and I live by that. It is just the one thing that if you're sitting there and wishing your life was this, first of all, Instagram can be a facade to anyone. You don't really know what you're looking at. Like, you don't know if that person's life is perfect all because their body's perfect. Is it face soon? Is it real life? Like, you yeah. cannot compare your life to what you see on that. You have to own the skin you're in, love yourself for who you are, put out what, you know, honest and real mm -hmm. content to the world and not try to you know, fit into whatever, you know, you think is cool at that time. Like being authentically yourself is so important mm -hmm. in this day and age. And I think, you know, it, it's still a struggle for me. I go through social media and I sit there, I'm like, oh my God. Especially with like the metrics. I'm just oh like, oh, I don't need to see that. Like I you feel like the content it. means something, but then with Instagram, it's like, well, apparently Instagram only rewards content that is like this look yeah it's crazy it's, it, it, it is a crazy thing for me especially you know i because i can be a little bit sexier on my instagram and not too sexy i'm like my dad follows my instagram and anything my dad can prove us <laughs> don't post you make sure your dad's okay That's with it so, <laughs> so um but i try but those photos whether it's in a bikini or stuff are always validated it's always the 12,000 13,000 yeah. likes on that. but then i'm like sitting there like okay like today was a bad day and i'm smiling and i'm like writing this big caption and you just get like 2,000 3,000 likes because yeah. it wasn't yeah. in the algorithm because it wasn't what, what Instagram wanted to see. Mm -hmm. That's something I will say, even if you're in the influencer world, you please don't base your Instagram off of the amount of likes you're gonna get. Do yeah. content well, that means something to you. They stop the likes too? Yeah, yeah. Why I don't see yeah. likes yeah. on my phone? I think it's a double-edged sword. You just gotta be in acceptance, I guess, of yourself. It's really hard. Absolutely, and it's something everyone's gonna battle every day. Like it's not yeah. something that will get easier. But you wake up with those positive affirmations. I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I am beautiful. My, for me, it's my worth is not based on a number on a scale. My worth is not based on what that. you know size pant I fit in that day. Like I am beautiful as I am. God made me as I am, and I need to own that and live that and breathe that. And when I like really manifest that in my life, there's so much peace. But then there are days though where, and I can say this because I'm I live with Naya. Of course. Yeah. But there are days where you don't you don't see that, and right. then you, you, yeah. then I have to remind you like why you're doing what you're doing. Mm. What's the purpose of this? Is there a reason behind why you're feeling a little bit flat? And we can all have these great values, yeah. and we can wake up and love our skin we're in, feel yeah. positive, confident. But, but at the end of the day, Rock no human. one's invincible, and we go through vulnerable moments where we think we're the piece of shit of the earth, and that we're never going to be good enough. Or yeah. there's always going to be someone better out there than us, and. 
it's just how you look at it. Yeah. It's the way you change your perspectives on that, I feel, yeah. is really important because we'll all have bad times and we'll all have really good times. Yeah. And you can stick by the strong values. Like you, you've got great ones on your wall right here. They help. Definitely yeah. helps. They help. They happen. remind you, but there are times where you don't feel good enough. Yeah. You don't feel powerful. You don't feel loved. You don't feel confident. So mm. it's about um, accepting that that's sometimes okay to feel like that. That's, yeah. what, that's how I look at it. And there is importance in having a partner that would uplift you and be able to understand. I don't think he'll ever understand my brain fully, but someone who works in mental health, which you guys will, you know, hear about yes. so having someone who can just go take a step back and like see that I'm having a bad day, see me grabbing myself in the mirror, or crying or saying I feel fat, I feel ugly, I feel this, I feel that. Having someone who can come up to you and be like, you know, I don't know exactly what you're going through, but let's talk about it. Mm. Like I just want to talk with you. I want to remind you, you are this you are that you know you don't have to compare yourself to this that importance in a like a significant other is something i never could have imagined for myself because i always thought i was going to go through this alone like it was always just this internal battle i had god but i didn't think i'd be able to like lean on him and to be able to have someone that is so uplifting and supportive is i mean really something that people need to look for it's not about a blue check mark or what they yeah. do in life or it is someone who understands you and is there for you and pushes you to be better. And I really can say that Sam has been such a light in my life for the reasons of, you know, struggling on my own, but just to, you know, have that support system. I think that's everything. And like, yeah. it's like in a partner with the content you consume, mm -hmm. like it's so important that our inputs are like mm -hmm. the most supportive and sacred thing. And I think that's such a perfect segue to for Sam's yeah. story and like what you're doing with living. And I would love for you to give like the story behind the emergence of it and everything you're doing with the platform. I, I the definitely brand. can, I, I can. And, uh, and I'm honest uh, and I think it's it's important to, to understand you have to be honest sometimes. Oh, yeah. You have to be honest all the time, especially when you're not feeling right. I think for living, when living first started in 2013, um, it was in a year of, I was spiraling out of control. My mental health was mm -hmm. copying the beating. I wasn't feeling too good. You know, there was times in my life where I was probably, not that I'd ever probably act on it, I was suicidal at certain stages of my life. I was taking drugs, I was drinking excessively. I was spending time with people that weren't the best reflection of who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and they say you, st you, you do become the people you spend most of your time yeah. with. So it's important to have a really good circle, something that I've learned, something that I probably value now more than ever is the people and the things you consume, media, people, food, all that stuff, which we'll talk about. But September 15, 2013 will be a night I'll never forget um, for a number of reasons. But for the most important reason was I had a very one-on-one -on -one conversation with a close friend of mine mm -hmm. at a party. And I knew a little bit about mental health, mental illness, um, having grown up in a family that had sort of it affected us in more ways than one. I still didn't quite understand it in a way where I could talk about it really openly because there's a lot of stigma that's associated with mental illness and, mm -hmm. and health challenges. And my friend Dwayne opened up to me at a party on September 15, 2013 and, and told me about his struggles with bipolar disorder. And um, he told me out of nowhere, we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he told me that I've tried to take my life twice before and um, I, I didn't, like, I just didn't see where that was coming from. I had no idea that he'd ever been in that situation before because to paint the story, this guy is very, very charismatic, very, you know, happy-go-lucky guy, life of the party, 25, you know, yeah. young guys, and some of the prom of our lives. We had, we had the best, best chats, best conversations. He had an amazing partner, a beautiful family that was extremely well, um, connected and they were all one. It wasn't like Dwayne went through, you know, family breakups or divorce and came from a disconnected household. It was all very well put together. So from the outside looking in, he seemed like he had it all. But behind, behind closed doors, he hit his pain extremely well because of the, the shame and the pride that he was giving up. Uh, and I guess at the expense of himself, right? So. Mm -hmm. He told me his life, you know, was all on a good path right now. He did try to take his life a couple of times, but he promised me, looked me in the eye and said, everything's good. My, my future looks bright and promising. And, um, you know, I know that I'd reach out to people like yourself, Sam, if I was struggling. And, yeah. 
you know, he, he, he reassured me that I reassured him. I was open and honest about my own challenges, um, about, you know, how I was feeling and um, the challenges that I've been through in my life. And I remember him, you know, looking at me and, you know, some of the last things he said was, don't worry, Sam, I'm fine. And that was the last conversation that I had with him that night. And moments later, Dwayne opened up and had a, a, some altercation or an argument at the, at the party. And um, unbeknown at the time, uh, he took off from the party and I didn't know that that was the last time that I was going to see my good friend in living form. And Dwayne ended up taking his life that evening, not, not long after we spoke. And the impact that that had directly on, on family and close friends changed people's mm -hmm. lives forever. It wasn't a, a momentary, you know, moment thing where it was changing in a year. It, it's forever. Um, yeah. They say suicide affects 115 people, but I can tell you that you can't quantify someone's life on, on a number, right? So the impact has skyrocketed. So one life and we started living. And the reason, you know, a big part of the motivation behind that was um, at Dwayne's wake, we made shirts for him and had his face on it with a message that he loved out of a song by Xavier Rudd. Um, and we sold the shirts to help fund the family so they could pay for the, for yeah. the funeral. And his parents looked at Casey and myself. So Casey's my, my partner, we both started it in 2013. Um, and they said, hey, you know, you keep the money, just do something good with it. And we're like, wow. well, I was still struggling. I'm sure a lot of people were struggling at this stage, you know, going through the depressive, talking about losing a friend and yeah. the drinking that comes with it. And we started living. Dwayne always used to say, we're living. We're living, man, we're living. He was living a life to the fullest all the time, like I was, like we all probably do. And we started living with T-shirts and, and friends were supporting it. The word got out and it just went from this little passion project in, in you know, our garage and just blew up out of nowhere and, and yeah one thing led to the next and then one of the biggest turning points for us was what would we have wanted at a young age that may have saved Wayne's life and um, it was education it was I didn't have when I grew up at a young age someone telling me what mental illness was like what it felt like like how could you look after a friend like Asia if you were struggling right now this is what I'd probably help say, mm -hmm. or these are the people you could go to see if you were struggling without burying it yeah. and just living in pain. Because a lot of people who are listening right now are probably doing the same thing. They're not living, they're just surviving. And, and there's no, nothing positive comes from just getting by every day. Mm -hmm. And we developed the program and we started speaking in schools right over Australia. And then we had Chris Hemsworth wear our merch and then wow. it blew up and then yeah, just one thing led to the next. and then. We started a podcast called It Ain't Week to Speak and yeah. I, I'm the host of that and, and it's just really about creating hope for people that don't see hope, mm -hmm. giving people a, a reason to live because a lot of people that don't don't find purpose in their life to live and we just want to create that for them through a really simple message of living. That's beautiful. Every time I hear that story. I'm like, <laughs> that is insane. I like, yeah, like well that, like, oh, it's awesome. I've... I love that story and I, it's so like this brand and what you're doing, there's such a need for it and I think it's just such a pure representation with how it's scaling and evolving with the podcast and the program and speaking. It's like that's showing you like there's such a demand and, and this is such a, a conversation that needs to be had. Mm -hmm. um, I know with, with speaking, you even did a TEDx talk. Yeah. How was that? What was that experience? Yeah. Like what was the talk on? It was, it was tough oh. because like... And Nards was there. We oh, yeah, the we're in, we're wow. in New York. We're in New York City, living the dream. And I've done a lot. Of, and, and before I even start, I mean, living wouldn't be where it is today without the people that support us, and the people who have obviously gone through their own pain, mm. and the people who have probably lost their lives, and the people that that's affected. And you know, living wouldn't exist without the support that we get. So I have to thank everyone um, mm. for the support because we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, long story short, to the TEDx talk. Was so it in LA? It was in New, New York. York. Oh, wow. Columbus so, Circle. I was like, is this real? Yeah, this so, is like two months into us dating. So I know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, after that, I was like watching. I was like, oh, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is no, on. <laughs> it was hard. And I've done a lot of speaking engagements in my, in my life. And big crowds, huge crowds, in, in, in intimidating crowds. But I think that the pressure I put on myself because of the 
what, TEDx and TED and all that means. I was like, I need an artist. Small crowd, only like 85, 90 people. Well, then it goes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, yeah, and then I was like, but it was a great experience. And, and the topic I spoke on was, um, I'm fine, which was the last two words I heard from my friend Dwayne before he took his life. I'm fine breaking the burden of masculinity, which is what I spoke, oh, what I spoke about. Oh, powerful. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Right. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a forever evolving thing. A great experience, good feedback. Um, obviously, you know, just grateful to be able to get that opportunity. But there are so many great people doing great things in the world. And we're just trying to add to that. And that's all we're doing. We're just doing the best we can. Yeah, doing a good job at that, though. Sure. Support. Nard has been a great support <laughs> network, my family and, and everyone else. So, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to mm, doing it too. It's so powerful. And you, you guys both, like, have such strong like it's just such a like anyone listening and watching it's like it just makes sense like you guys both are such heart-centered entrepreneurs and leaders and like your why is not just like oh i want to reach more people it's like such a strong why that makes you cry essentially it's like a connection of what we've gone through yeah i think we just finally learned like there's no need to be ashamed of stories Mm -hmm. not tell like any listener of that like anything you've gone through can help someone so much with you like not even realizing it. You could think you're a piece of crap for, you know, the time that you did starve yourself or you did hurt yourself or that you can't come like see the light at the end of the tunnel when your friend did take their life. But look what you can do with just that story that can fuel your fire to go. I want no one else to feel the way that I felt in that darkest moment. And when you turn your pain into a light, I mean, it's a game changer. It just puts it's a hard. purpose into your life. It's, it's hard. hard. Like, no, it's, oh, it's hard for someone to sit there and, and I had this conversation a long ago on a podcast. It's like, how can you, like, why are so many stories and people's turning points in life from something of pain? Yeah. And it's generally when we're faced with big obstacles that mm-hmm. we're trying to dig deeper to either make or break. And it's because that's just where we're pushed to as human beings. But how often do you hear someone that's just made, made a, made something great out of already being great it's it's, you don't hear it as often um and i think everyone's got a wonderful story that needs to be told and everyone has their own challenges and everyone has their own breakthroughs it's just sticking with it and being patient and um again surrounding yourself and i've probably said this three four times already surrounding yourself with the right people surrounding yourself with the right uh things like Putting, and I, I love having, like, personally, I don't know Nards does, and I don't want to speak for you, but we love having fun. You've got to have fun. If you're not having fun doing what you're doing, there's no point doing it. you really got to have fun. And mm-hmm. living's been hard. There has been so many challenges. Anyone, you're starting any business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially in LA. Oh, <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. And, and you, you've done the same thing with what you're working on, and it's, nothing's easy, and it's, it's um, challenging. But you've got to have fun. You've got to, you've got to find a time to smile mm-hmm. and laugh and, like, not take it too seriously because yeah. when you start taking it too seriously, it's just it you doesn't love scale. It. It. Especially, yeah, I resonate with that so much. Like just being like a young entrepreneur, we want to do all the things, yeah. and we live in this society when it's like you you're constantly seeing other people's highlight reels, yeah. and you think you should be there when like you got to honor the now and enjoy it because you're gonna get there faster and you're gonna love the the process doing it too. Yeah. And I, I think that's so powerful and. I would love to hear, because you guys are both such like energized, filled cups, like always just like, I feel like with every, the projects you guys have going on, you need to, I would say you have to fill up your own cup and you have mm-hmm. to come from that space in order to like over pour onto other people, whether mm-hmm. that's like with modeling and yeah. I see you on set, like with everything, you have so much energy you bring onto everyone, so much light and Sam with everything you're doing with living, like there's so many areas where you need to, always show up for others and be a leader to your team. So how do you guys do it, even individually and as a couple, like your morning routines, things that you guys do that make you the people that you are, that fuel you for your days? Yeah, I mean, as we keep going around this, we surround ourselves people around really good people, whether it's our family, our friends, they uplift us. Our morning routine, I will say like, or first, at first for me, faith has always been a huge part of my mm-hmm. life, and we made prayer a very big part of our routine. We read our Bible in the morning, kind of sets us up for a great day. For the most one, yeah. Yeah, the most one. We miss it, but... Oh my <laughs> God, you backfire on everything I say. I'm trying to just, like, so we... <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, sorry, five days a week, we read the Bible. Um, and uh, it really sets us up for a very positive morning. Just going, okay, we're going to be lights today, pray together, do our own thing. Um, 
what personally for you do you feel like get, gives you that light? Yeah, I, th- I think, and that's been something Nards has introduced me to since we, we, we obviously met, and it's been a great thing for me. I'm still trying to find peace in my life. Obviously, it's it's not all uh, it's not all happy days, right? It's always challenging, but um, exercise for me has always been number one priority. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, so again, surrounding yourself with the right people, I learned because I know how dark my, my life got when I when I, I didn't have that great support. I didn't have the people that were open and vulnerable, and therefore I couldn't be open and vulnerable. So I like surrounding myself mm-hmm. with people that are very like minded, very very important, uh, but also prioritizing self care. So I, I often look at self care right as um, like a and think of your to do list for the day. Self care for me is always at the top, mm. and that that isn't being selfish at all. The way I look at that is if I'm not ticking self care off the top of my list first, I'm not going to be that good for the rest of the people. So I wouldn't be able to give mm. Aisha what she wants for a podcast. I wouldn't be able to help mm. Nadia in the house just because I I get in a not bad mood. I just it just doesn't. I'm better for other people when I'm the best for myself. Yeah. And, and and I'm actually going at a disservice to others mm-hmm. if I'm not looking after Sam. And I know that now because I've been through the ringer. I've had bad times. I've had great times, and I know it works for me. Self care is number one care for me, and that could be exercise, reading the Bible, mm-hmm. speaking to nards, going for a walk, and or having a nice little juice or food or something in the morning that fuels my body. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But everyone's different. My self care might be very different to ours. Is very, similar, very similar. But it might be different to yours. Like yeah. you might have self care like going for a run or something and yeah. I might like boxing and you know you might read and I and do meditation I, I might not like meditation I yeah. might do something that works for me because yeah. we're all different mm-hmm. and, and it's about finding that right fit yeah. yeah but not doing something because you've listened to a podcast and a psychologist or a yeah, friend does why don't you, why don't you go that. start running or why don't you go and eat uh, two juices a week or why don't, you, why don't you play for a, an hour or the morning or whatever it is don't just do it because someone else tells you to do it and it yeah. sounds good, do it because you enjoy it. If you're not getting joy from it, again, same as work and a relationship, there's no point doing it. It's yeah. just a waste. Mm-hmm. I love that you said that because I think that that's what turns people off from like yeah. these morning routines or these like, cause there's these people who are like, you have to wake up at 4 a.m. You have to have mm-hmm. this amount of water, this amount. And it's like, you don't, and then you just, make people not even want to have a morning routine mm-hmm. or make one because they think that's the only way it's not it's too hard yeah, yeah. It's, it's always about like choosing what's best for you yeah, yeah and the thing is it's not like a one like it's not like and now you'll agree with me when i say this, it's not like a we're not all improving linearly 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 linearly, linearly. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. but you know like we're all on our own journey so mm-hmm. you can't compare your shit if I'm sorry if I'm swearing to someone else's no, shit. shit. Because it's all very, very different. Yeah. yeah. But it's in terms of ourselves, like my struggle right now, I shouldn't belittle my struggle because in my mind I think you have gone through something worse. It's relative to Sam. So my yeah. struggle needs to be nurtured and stuff the same way as my successes. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's important to really understand that, I think. And I think not a lot of people understand that. Like, People always put other people first and do everything for everyone else, but they're the ones that are burning out at the end of the day. Okay. They're the ones that aren't really fulfilled and happy because they're doing so much for everyone else and not enough yeah. for themselves. That was very much so me. That is something I super struggled with is like, you were talking about like pouring the water and stuff. I would pour my pot into everyone and it always end up empty yeah. because I was giving and giving and giving and you can stay with me and I'll take care of you and I'll get the bill. And I, it was a part of my life where I was like, oh, if I show people love, I'll receive it back. When I wouldn't get that love, it's not even love. It was like these actions where I I guess I wanted like validity from what I was doing to go, I'm a good person, but I was a good person without having to pour so much. And I realized, oh my gosh, I have to like surround myself with people who are pouring back. And that meant cutting so many friends. And that's so hard because you're just like your friend group, (laughs) your friend group goes from so many people, everyone who's, oh, what are you doing tonight? Like the the ones that like, it's easy to like, oh, I've got me myself and I and you know the few around me but like I had to take a step and go like I need to love me for me and stop trying to like make everyone else happy because at the end of the day I was drained I was tired and I was just like I I needed to find my peace and when I started you know more of the self-care like I saw how prominent it was in his life I was like wow like that's something I need to apply to mine so I realized like, it's okay. My feelings do come first. I don't have to get back to that message immediately to help that person. Like I need to do me 
to be okay for everyone else. And that would, the self-care thing, I don't, I, I applied it in the ways that I thought it would in the beginning of just like, oh, I gotta work out, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also one of those things which is forever in and out of sync. Yeah. You've always gotta re- recalibrate that compass. Sometimes yeah. my self-care is not always the greatest. It's, yeah. And sometimes it's really, really good. It's about trying to find what, what you're doing mm-hmm. and, and knowing and being aware of that when it's going bad, you know, yeah. when you're doing when that cup's empty, I guess. And it's, yeah. like, it's again, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. I, I can tell you right now, I make challenges, stuff ups, mistakes all the time, but you just gotta accept it. It's just yeah. life. And you care. get better too at it. Like yeah. now you can probably tell, like, I need more Sam self care. Like, you, yeah. the, like the thermometer would kind of like, is so much more heightened. And then I can really resonate with that, Natty, because I'm like such a people pleaser. And mm. I think it's like also like the Canadian in me. We always yeah. want to do everything yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And now I moved out here. I, like a year like still even now I'm like oh my god Aisha why don't you learn your lesson like yeah. but it's so crazy that you really do need to almost be selfish because you know you're want like what you're doing in the mm-hmm. world you need to be a fulfilled cup in of order course. to have that impact and go speak and have that energy to pour on to the people who need it yeah um so it's so powerful um do you guys have any mentors currently any anything that like has really um, made a really big like ins- inspiration on your life that like is a current mentor in your life I feel like those are always yeah we all like I feel like mentors are such a big thing especially yeah. with really passionate entrepreneurs yeah I, I think and it's a good question it's one that I probably have been asked uh, you know a couple of times and and I think people have have mentors mm. and mentors mentors <laughs> however I say and um I think for me me personally mm-hmm. again very we're all very different. My mentors are people I met. Mm-hmm. And why I say that is because I'm a very inquisitive, curious person. I like to give as much as I can, but I also but I'm also open to asking questions and taking what could work in my life yeah. from their wisdoms. I feel like everyone's got wisdom mm-hmm. and learnings in their life that could be applied to your own in some way, shape or form. It's just about being able to find what that is. So for me, my, I don't have, I don't look to one person and go, they're my mentor, or I don't have a call with one person every two days because yeah. they're my sounding board. I, I actually, and my mentors are people and the things that I learn from. Yeah. If I'm not, if I'm not making mistakes or getting challenges in my life, I'm not learning, and if I'm not learning, I, I don't actually have a mentor. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, totally. Yeah, it's the pe- people, everyone, strangers in the street, people I meet at parties. I said, you, everyone's a teacher. Right yeah. Yeah. Everyone's a teacher. And yeah, you're everyone. A student of life. I'm, my my yeah. mentor, my personal mentor, is I'm a student of life. Mm. And that might sound a bit, I don't know, but <laughs> that's just the way I live. No, life, so. no, I, and I and I fully agree with that. I side with that big time, but also, I mean mentor for me my parents have been such an incredible just like guidance in my life when you know my mom is like my best friend and my dad really is you know my dad's a pastor so he's very much Mm -hmm. so like with his faith if he can see on instagram i'm looking a little leaner you know or is he a little ribby or a little something he's the first person to come back Okay, baby. Like, dad does that too. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. How are you? What? And you know, to lean on my parents is such an amazing thing because mm-hmm. they really have molded me into the woman I am today. And mm-hmm. to have that, you know, I can easily pick up the phone and call them. Now, now they're not my like, mom, I need you to do that. You know, I don't like, lean on them like that. Like mm-hmm. I said, I you do learn from all of those people around you, but to have such awesome, just like role models in your life. I will always say my role model like anyone but mommy and daddy. I am such like a little baby to this day, but it's just because they really have, they poured my pot from the day I was born. They're still born. Every time I felt a bit empty, they've always been there to fill my pot. And that's been so important. That's so, it's so, it's so beautiful because yeah. I really resonate with that too, just because I feel like they're my best friend. Yeah, exactly. And like they're nothing but unconditional love, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I have to ask. Yeah. So I know we kind of sprinkled in on this in the podcast, but I would love to hear, because I know there's a lot of people listening, either A, they see this, especially after this episode, they're going to be like, oh my God, I, I want that relationship for mm-hmm. And uh, I'm telling you guys, like, you can have this relationship. Like, yeah. it's everyone's birthright to have a loving relationship. But also someone who's listening who maybe they're in a relationship that's not serving them, and I want to mm-hmm. honor them too for listening to content that mm-hmm. really is just making them, like, think bigger and like grow their mind and it just like evolve them as as people so what would you say both of you guys like 
the things like non-negotiables for relationships and even like pulling from your relationship like why do you guys think it's so successful and abundant like what are the principles you think that made yeah. that every relationship needs to have i think the most important one if you want to get first you, you, you first. always look at me to get first next time i just look at you because you're talking i think i think the ability <laughs> the, i think the ability to understand mm. but, but listening to understand with intent. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I feel like a really big important part of any relationship is communication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the most important. If you can't communicate transparently and honestly and openly and challenge someone, if you don't like something that they're doing or mm -hmm. you're seeing them decline or something they've done or said mm -hmm. or have acted upon, you just don't like it, it's important to call that out as it is, say it how it is and talk about it and talk through it. I think mm -hmm. is very important because that alleviates and again, I'm not a relationship therapist or a coach or a, or a guru by any means. Again, I'm a student of life, giving my own experiences, and that that has served me very well with Nadia. Mm -hmm. um, something that didn't serve me well in the past. Yeah. Um, and just being radically honest. So radically honest. honest. So honest. Those two. When you, you get don't those two it. right. If you, I feel, if you can nail those two, a relationship built off the core foundation of trust and communication. If you can get them two right. And then the other things you like, like you're attracted and all that stuff, great. Yeah. You're, you're on the, mm. I feel like you, I don't see how maybe couldn't work, you know? Yeah, you look for similar interests and if they, yeah. they like what you do and, and all that stuff, but I feel like That's you can have that, yeah. but if you don't have the trust and the communication, mm. then it's yeah. not going to work anyway. Totally. That's yeah. how I see it. Nuts? Yeah, no, I mean. <laughs> no? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Back on that. Yeah. But I mean, support. Oh my God. Support yeah. is such a big thing with us. Like, you know, you don't always have to see eye to eye. You have to realize you can agree to disagree. That's, we that's, agree we to always, disagree. We, we can bicker. I can freaking hit him. I'm like, be quiet. Like, but like, oh, we. You're the worst. <laughs> you're the worst. He can be a pain in the ass and I can be a pain in the ass. But we you also, are a pot, bigger You are the best of it anyways. You have to know that these are totally normal. Not yeah. everything is supposed to be picture perfect. Like, yeah, we can live like, oh, we had this bait, this story, this all. But we still have our crap with the beauty yeah. of communication, the support, the agreeing to disagree, but also being able to understand, like, listening to each other. Yeah. Which I was not a good listener in the beginning. I'm a talker. I'm always like, yeah, I'll tell you what I have. I feel about that. But, like, he's like the listener. He sits back and like observes. And I was like, ooh, I need to learn from that. So like listening to what we have to say and like, the why behind yeah. making this decision or doing this, you, you know, if you can really come to terms of like, okay, like, but I support you for this and then we're going to get through this. Or this. There's mm -hmm. just a flow. You find this flow that is just like, it just feels right. That corny feeling when you meet someone and you just go, oh, this, it, it shouldn't be hard. It should be easy, Yeah. you know, but it's not always going to be easy, and, but yeah. it, it's okay. You know, the, the flow and our, you know, the feelings like, it's all just, it's gonna fall into place, but there have to be those core values of the communication, the trust, the support, the, yeah. you know. And, it, and it, it's that stuff sometimes, for people that are listening, for example, that might be in a relationship that's not serving them well, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. or people that are just, they're ready, they might be ready to get it on. <laughs> what are you saying, like, a relationship, you know, like, get it maybe, on. maybe, for that, like, Sometimes you don't just uncover this on the first time you meet someone, no. obviously. Yeah. But you get a pretty good vibe. Totally. Talking about good vibes, I mean, it's, <laughs> I got a good vibe when I met Nards. It was pretty good. But I didn't instantly go, oh, this could be the one forever. The See, first I did. <laughs> but that's just being honest. And it took time. It took time and made mistakes and listened and yeah. didn't like certain things. And then we, 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 you change, you grow, you, okay. and all that stuff. But I, I don't think... And, I know, and again, talking from my own experiences, at that moment when I met Nadia, I certainly was not looking for a relationship. Same. I was in the um, best time, like honestly. I think like, that's what all guys say. I was, I was, I was so many <laughs> years proper single, and I'd come up to the, the best times, and I loved life as I was for You're myself. You're living. I was living. living. And I just, Nadia was just in the crosshairs, and she just got, she got shot. Yeah. <laughs> and she got shot. Um, you know no, but it was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was single for five years, like prior to him, like dating and all like, oh my God, the non criminal <laughs> land of like, I like you, but like, not like a label. Like we're not changing our Facebook thing. And I was like, this is terrible. But to meet someone who wanted just like, after months of getting to know each other and that commitment was mm. so awesome. Just cause like, I was so used to, and I will say like, 
at the beginning of our relationship, I was jaded in the way of like expecting the worst to happen. Just like he was going to ghost me. Mm. Oh my God. The amount of times ghosting has happened. I'm like, ugh, like Los Angeles, the yeah. land of ghosts. Um, so I was just waiting for the worst to happen. But then you realize, oh no, there are great people out there. So like get out of that thing of like, oh, I'm never going to find someone here or there or here. I mean, I have to travel across the dang world. Yeah, all the ladies kids. after this are going to be fucking Everyone go to Australia. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I mean, it's just the timing of life. And when you're ready as a person, things just flow. And I happen. totally, yeah. It's a, that energy, right? Yeah. Like you were ready. You were ready even until <laughs> you, you were ready, right? And it's like, I feel like we have to honor that energy and not mm-hmm. like put out the energy. Like we need it now. We're not complete until that person. Cause like mm-hmm. you guys are both so complete in your own yeah. world. And it just happened. Like that's when the fit was just so aligned. Yeah. And then you were moving. Like it yeah. just, I think that's like, what I want everyone to like to honor their timing too. Yeah, but, but also like people like I've got friends back in Australia and friends here in LA that are single and they may not want to be single and they're, they're, they're not feeling fulfilled. What I say even close friends back home is like just focus on yourself. Like mm. don't 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 sit down and be desperate to find because you're probably gonna end up finding someone that's probably not the right fit. Yeah, that's that right. Yeah. So you, right? you, you've really got a something that I, I like I, again I was single for quite a while and I just didn't want to settle for anything less than what I deserved. And when I say yeah. that is I, I, I did so much work on myself and and I knew that, you know, the good, the bad, everyone's got weaknesses. I've got plenty mm. of them. Uh, yeah. and I just knew my worth and I knew what I was after and I wasn't settling. Obviously, yeah. there's something just that was mediocre, just to fill a void because I was happy within myself. Yeah. And I see friends and I see people that have come out of relationships and they want to get straight back in one because they don't like mm-hmm. being on their own or they just they, they feel like they need someone to be complete. I, I, I don't believe that. I feel like everyone, you don't need someone to be complete. I, people that are struggling with that, I, I say just do more work on yourself. Mm-hmm. Work better on yourself. Mm-hmm. Do better things. Challenge yourself. Step out of your comfort zone. Maybe go to the morning boxing class that you've never been to by yourself you don't know who you're meant yeah. it might yeah. just be that situation on that day at that time that you meet the love of your life in the moment you know what I mean working on yourself yes. or you're working on yourself and you realise that that's why you didn't get someone when you were desperate because you weren't ready for that person because you, you just weren't ready and then you look back or when you're in a toxic relationship and you go oh and you're trying to, so hard to make it work and I want to make it work and it doesn't work and all the heartache and breakthroughs and all that stuff that you went through then you find someone that you're in a really healthy relationship with and then you go, uh-huh. Mm. That's my aha uh-huh moment because it's like, that's why that relationship yeah. didn't work out because this is the one I was supposed to be. And I, yeah. Be, be open to that stuff and, and really appreciate that things, they do tend to happen for a reason, I believe. Everything, everything's yeah. your teacher. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. I always say you cannot block your blessings, mm-hmm. but you have to be like at that, like, it's if it if it's not the right timing like the universe god like it's always knows the right timing for you sometimes we don't know it in the moment because we're like i want that i want but honestly you have to trust and have faith in that oh it's powerful so many gems so many (laughs) gems i like don't want it to end up but we're not ending yet because i want it i want the people to hear like what you guys are working on I know there's so many different things individually you guys have yeah. going on. Nads, I know you just launched a line with a brand. So I yeah. want to hear the projects you guys are doing now and then plug also your the way that they can support and connect. Yeah. Um, okay. So well, what I'm wearing actually is so, I love my the color. collaboration with High Peach. So I didn't launch it. I have to make that clear. I did an edit with a brand. So like as much as I want to be like, I made this, I did it. <laughs> oh my god no, no, I, so cute. I, yeah no I, so i worked with this brand that i absolutely loved like mm-hmm. just as a model and we like really connected in the vibes and the energy they were, were amazing and they were like i want you to be our brand ambassador i was like i want you to do whatever you want me to do because they were just so <laughs> awesome so i did an edit with them and we just did a launch nadia.highpeach.com is my day to night edit oh. um which was really exciting because i think i've always just been like the chick behind the camera, just like the, the human mannequin, but I've never gotten to like show that creative side of like what I do and like what I like to wear and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So that was a project that I just did. But as of now, okay, I'm not really allowed to like say much on it, but I, I've sang most of my life. I have been, I was singing worship from the age of 11 years old. And, you know, that's always been a passion of mine. And um, I've decided, you know, 10 years later into modeling, 
I'm getting at that point again where I'm kind of just like, yes, I can be that model with message, but I'm, I always say I'm a recovering alcoholic working in a bar. Like I will never fully recover like with, you know, the way I view myself and stuff mm-hmm. until I, I got to venture out of that. I not, don't need to be dependent on modeling anymore. Yes, I know my worth and use, but I'm still triggered constantly. Mm-hmm. So I have decided for myself that I want to pursue music right oh, now so over silly. the modeling. Um, and we've, me and, oh God, I, it's hard to talk about because I'm not really allowed to talk about it. But think of like, you know, I'm going to use my Ecuadorian side, my American side, like Despacito, but oh. like, you know, a little Spanish, it's a little English. It, it's a work in progress that I, once I'm able to talk more about, I'll yeah, just got to um, But I'm focusing on things where I get to use my voice to make a difference because as grateful as I am for the doing a model and as grateful for, as I am with the career and the clients that I have at this moment in my life, I also just have to look out for me. Mm-hmm. And I think looking out for me, I've realized and, you know, have really prayed about and thought about is moving on. You Finding things stay as you were on. No. That. Yes. I have to follow that feeling that I don't, I don't want to feel that ugh anymore. I finally want to do mm-hmm. what makes Nadia happy. Yeah. Modeling can make me happy some days, but like, I, I know things that'll really make me feel whole and i'm mm. going to pursue that because that's just like where i feel god's leading me at this time so stay tuned for that but yeah for now i'm a mom <laughs> oh it's incredible it's yeah it's great and um yeah i'm just working on uh out here in la living the dream <laughs> no, <laughs> trying to trying to spread the living message far and wide obviously i'm very very much involved in living obviously our headquarters is back in australia um, plan was to try and expand it over here, which we, we, which we will definitely. Working on a couple of other little projects, but my, my other core passion of mine is acting. Mm. Um, I'm pursuing that relentlessly um, in a hope that I can use that platform once that sort of yeah. goes off to help spread the living message and the message around mental health and, and suicide prevention. Uh, that's the real, real game plan for me. But other than that, trying to stay healthy, fit, um, and just enjoy my time out here, enjoy life and start creating a life out here. Mm, it's um, powerful, both of you guys me. using like, you guys both have incredible influence and pro- platforms, but what you're doing with it, it, that's, it's amazing to see because it's like using your influence for good. And even mm. like with acting, you you have a passion for it and a talent. And it's like when you land your next movie, you're yeah. gonna have even like more of a voice to share on all these topics that deserve light yeah and it's it's we live in a world too where yes sometimes the sexy topics don't get attention off the bat but we gotta make them mainstream and it's Mm -hmm. beautiful when you meet people who are doing such amazing things with their platform and their voice so just want to honor you both for that thank you and let us know where instagram plug it if that's the best plug your podcast i'll have everything linked in the show notes too but verbally if if people want to put want to jump over and listen to the podcast they're they're happy to find us on all the the, the platforms wherever you get your podcast it's called it ain't weak to speak with sam webb and you'll be able to follow living uh across all channels which is living org l-i-v-o-l-i-v-i-n-o-r-g or sam webb s-a-m-w-e-b-b and I'm just at Nadia underscore Mejia and just follow along that journey. My life, I feel like, is about to take like a, a turn. So it'll you guys be gotta get, get on for the ride. You yeah. gotta follow. Yeah. You gotta get that merch. I'm like obsessed. If you guys are watching the video, you're blessed with Nadia's merch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get you something. I'll send you something. I'm up. obsessed. I actually <laughs> saw, I'm not even joking, a guy wearing that at the farmer's market, a living sweater. And I was gonna like go up to him That's and amazing. say something. But <laughs> I was like, because it was on the back. It was a jacket. Yeah, and it was your stuff you. because I was looking at. Is it no, Melrose? No, no, no. no, it was here. Oh, oh, it was oh, here. Oh, if it was you guys, I yeah, would have put yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's not quite as established over here, but we're, we're growing it. And it's really trendy, like yeah. the stuff, like it's so mainstream. Yeah, mm-hmm. the woman's wear is also super cute, but the sweatsuits are what I live for. Oh. It's just like a little, it ain't weak to speak, like it's just, it's a conversation. It story. is, it really is, and it's it's, it's, it's fascinating, like a, a piece of merch can save a life, it actually does, I've, I've, I've witnessed it, I've seen it, and I think once we are set, like eventually have it based out here, whenever that may be, I think it will just 
Yeah, the whole new level. But mm, look, it's all gonna happen. We're speaking it into existence. Yeah, yeah. it's Man. gonna happen. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much, Sam Nadia. I am so grateful, and I know the audience is too. Just so much value dropped. And you guys, if you guys love this episode, please uh, screenshot your phones, tag Sam, tag Nadia, tag Coffee and a Good Vibe on Instagram. Let us know you're listening, and we just I want to thank you guys so much for investing time into you. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.